Hi everybody, it's Maria from cardbomb.blogspot.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be sharing a fun technique that uses your Stampin' Up! framelits to deboss into your cardstock. It's a really fun technique and it's so easy to do. I started with watercolor paper because it's softer than regular cardstock and holds an impression more easily, my flourish thinlets, and some cheap fun foam that I got from my local dollar store. Now this stuff is really thin, it's very cheap. You can see how much thicker the higher quality fun foam is. This is a silicone mat from Stampin' Up! and I've heard tales that you can use these to do this technique too. However, it didn't work for me. The fun foam is so much softer and the silicone mat didn't have any give and would not crank through my big shot. I don't recommend forcing anything through your big shot. I chose to use this large flourish from the flourishing thinlets. I placed it on top of my watercolor paper and put that on top of the fun foam. Then I put my plate on top, and it's really important to note that the cutting side of the framelit is facing up. If you place it face down, it will just cut through the watercolor paper. I cranked one side through, pulled it out, and check it out. It's really neat. I wanted to have this impression on both sides of my cardstock, so I flipped the paper around and did the whole thing again. And again, note, those cutting edges are facing up, not down. So the sandwich goes like this. On the bottom is my magnetic platform, one of my cutting plates, a piece of fun foam, my watercolor paper, my framelit cutting face up, and another plate. It works really well. And the fun foam ends up looking pretty cool too. I decided to go with a color scheme of lemon lime twist, emerald envy, island indigo, and elegant eggplant. I started by covering my workspace with a piece of paper and sponging the lemon lime twist on the bottom of my watercolor paper. The next color I used was Emerald Envy. Notice that when I sponge, I'm using a sponge dauber and I start off the paper to see how dark the color is and I sponge from the outer edge into the center of my background piece. My ink pad was a little bit too dry and I wasn't getting the color saturation that I wanted so I re-inked it. It's a little bit dangerous because when you do that you can end up with way too much ink on your sponge, but it worked out for me this time. The next color I'm using is Island Indigo, and while I prefer to use sponge daubers because they fit so perfectly on the end of my finger and I feel like I have very good control, you can also use larger sponges to do this technique. Now I've moved on to Elegant Eggplant, and if you've noticed I've started with my lighter color and I'm working towards my darkest. That's just the way I do it. I don't know if it really matters but it will help keep your darker inks off of your sponges that are dedicated for your lighter colors and your colors won't be muddied in the future. I didn't have enough ink saturation on this card on this background and I wasn't happy with the way that it looked so I decided to go back over the whole thing and add more color. Also I noticed that I stuck my finger on the ink and it wasn't totally dry yet and wasn't okay with me to leave fingerprints on my background. I still wanted it to be a bit more vibrant and if there's something you know about Lemon Lime Twist, that color is vibrant. So I started at the bottom of my card and I used my sponge to brush the Lemon Lime Twist ink up through the entire background of my card. It gave the card a nice glow and I was happy with how it looked. Next I grabbed my Stampin' Spritzer and spritzed a little water into my hands. I flicked it all over the card and then used a paper towel to mop it up. I did this quickly because I didn't want too much of the ink to come out of my paper. Even so, a little too much ink was lifted for my liking, so I used my sponge dauber to add some color back in. You can still see the droplets, but now there is not such a large contrast between the droplets and the rest of the background. I used both Lemon Lime Twist and Island Indigo to do this extra sponging, and here we have our finished background piece. The next thing I did was to use my Clear Wink of Stella pen to add a clear coating of sparkle over all of the debossed areas on my background piece. It's really subtle, but it adds such a nice bit of shimmer to the background. Clear Wink of Stella has really become my go-to product for when I want to step up a card just a little bit and make it more special, but I don't want to go too crazy with embellishments. And here we have the finished background. Now let's put the card together. This watercolor background piece is four and a quarter by five and a half, so it fits perfectly on this vertically oriented A2 sized card base in Night of Navy. I used Fast Fuse to adhere the piece, and then I firmly pressed it into place using a paper towel so that I wouldn't lift ink off the card with my fingers. Now it's time to do this little embossed sentiment. I started by swiping my embossing buddy over a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock to remove any static. Then I selected my sentiment from the Blooms and Wishes stamp set and inked it up in Versamark ink. I pressed firmly, and now I'm going to cover it with white embossing powder. 
After making sure that my whole sentiment was covered with powder, I used first a paintbrush and then my piercing tool to remove any extra little flecks of unwanted powder. I set the sentiment with my heat tool and used my paper snips to fussy cut it out. And let me tell you, this sentiment was pretty fussy to cut. But in the end, it's always worth it, right? Next, I grabbed a sheet of mini Stampin' Dimensionals and I used my snips to cut some thinner strips from the side. These mini dimensionals will fit in the middle of my sentiment, but I want to make sure that all of those thin little flourishes are well supported too when I put the sentiment on my card. So that meant that I had to cut a bunch of the little pieces out. I looked for just where I wanted to put my sentiment and stuck it on. And here we have our finished card. Please let me know if you have any questions. There will be a link to both my blog and to my store in the description below. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you back here next time. Bye.